RTV silicone rubber is the most commonly used mold making material primarily because of its flexibility and unique self-releasing properties. Blue Star silicone rubber is specifically known for its superior accuracy, high heat resistance, and excellent tear strength and elongation properties, which is why Freeman offers this line of silicones exclusively. Blue Star silicone rubber is the ideal material for most mold making applications, which is why we will use these materials for all of our remaining casting demonstrations, starting with a simple rubber mold. In preparing a silicone rubber mold, we are first putting clay around the edges of our model to make it adhere to the mold board. Next, we align the model in the center of our mold, remove the sides of the mold, and then press the model onto the wood. Next, we cut the excess clay from the edges of the model. Technically, you do not need a release agent with silicone rubber, but in order for the mold to slide off easier, we decided to apply a light coat of Freeman Wax Release. Here, we are using a white bristle throwaway brush to apply it, and then a cloth to gently buff it. Note that the wood has already been sealed with the wood and plaster sealer, so the surface itself is not porous. Otherwise, the silicone rubber will reproduce the surface of the wood, which is not what we want. For more information, refer to our other video on sealing wood. Finally, we screw on the sides of the mold. And now we're ready to pour the silicone rubber. For this demonstration, we're showing Blue Star's V340 and the CA55 catalyst. The other option here is the CA45 catalyst, which would change the hardness and flexibility. Here is what the base looks like. After the catalyst is shaken inside its bottle, we are mixing 10 parts base to 1 part catalyst by weight. And here is what the mixture looks like. For more information about weighing and mixing, please see our other video on this topic. Once the base and catalyst are fully mixed, we poured the mixture into a larger bucket for the degassing process. Since the mixture will rise while degassing, you need a larger container to hold the silicone rubber. Once it is properly weighed and mixed, our V340 is ready to be vacuum degassed. While degassing is not necessary for lower viscosity silicones such as V330 and V340, especially for simpler or less demanding casting applications, if you require an optimal, completely void-free mold, we recommend vacuum degassing the material. If you choose not to degas your silicone, you should be careful not to stir the base and catalyst too vigorously, and you should never use a mechanical mixer. When pouring a silicone rubber, you want to pour it at a low point first. Notice that this is thicker than a urethane like Repro. When you pour the material, you do enter a little more air into the mixture, but these bubbles will break on their own. This mold will take about 16 to 18 hours to cure. An addition cure rubber can be accelerated only by heating it. A condensation cure rubber can be accelerated chemically. Notice the larger bubbles that were introduced while pouring are already breaking on their own. The next day, our mold is ready. We remove the screws and then wedge the whole thing off with very little effort. Next, we pushed out our model from behind. Notice how accurately the silicone reproduces the surface of our model. Next, we pushed out the mold itself and pulled off the edges with our fingers. Our mold is now good for 30 to 150 uses, depending on the material. Anything that gets really hot will shorten the life of the mold. Here we have a mold that is starting to show its age. You can see the absorption of the urethane into the rubber, thus creating a discoloration. While still perfectly usable, this is an indication that the mold is reaching the end of its life. As we pour our thoroughly mixed repro into our mold, we typically like to create a smaller stream in order to break the bubbles better. 
Regardless, given its thin viscosity, bubbles aren't much of a problem with Repro, and it's never necessary to vacuum to gas Repro. After allowing our part to cure for 60 to 90 minutes, depending on the mass of the pour, we can now demold it and immediately begin using the mold to pour another casting. Even though the Repro is hard enough to demold in 60 to 90 minutes, full hardness and strength are not achieved until 24 hours. The part should not be placed into service until then. This mold can also be used to cast other materials, such as an epoxy casting resin, as we're demonstrating here with our Freeman 801. Notice how the aluminum filler used in Freeman 801 will create a little separation of color that you only see at the bottom of the pour. After allowing the material to cure overnight, you are ready to demold. Notice how many of the bubbles stay on the bottom. The thicker viscosity makes it less likely for the bubbles to rise, break, and self-level. However, the surface finish is outstanding. And here we show casting a polyurethane elastomer, such as our Freeman 1060 semi-rigid urethane. This time, we have two different silicone molds created from different models to show how well the silicone transfers the surface features of the original model. The smaller model had a dull finish that was recreated in the silicone rubber as well as the shiny finish in our larger model. This little model also displays the flex in our Freeman 1060 urethane elastomer and its superior impact resistance. For complete information on the products you've seen here, plus free access to over 30 other videos featuring topics such as silicone rubber mold making, polyurethane casting, building fiberglass laminate molds, forming composite parts, and more, please go to freemansupply.com and visit our extensive video library.